Hello, lovely people. Um, let me know if you're out there and if you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Um, yes, so can you hear me? If, you, uh, someone, if someone says yes, that would be great because I had some technical problems last time and I couldn't be heard. Is anyone out there that could let me know if they can hear me? I'll, t I'll type this on the screen in case you can't. Can anyone hear me? I had some tech. Yeah. Uh, thanks for that. Can anyone hear me? I'll just do that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank thanks, Mark. Nice one. So, um, it's my birthday. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to me. Um, oh, I can get rid of that now. Um, yeah, happy birthday to me. I'm 56 years old. Um, second time round on my Saturn return, apparently. Um, whatever that means. Uh, and uh, life is going rather well. So I'm guessing that I've done what I need to do. I had to get to this juncture, on, 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 in some way at least. Um, uh, yeah, the tradition, I believe, I, I believe the tradition is, is if when you hit a, a Saturn return, if you haven't dealt with the stuff you need to deal with, life will come along and give you a big whack to remind you. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm feeling quite pleased with myself that I'm having a nice day. Uh, it's a bit cold, but um, I had to be in my garden. I just, uh, it's, it's, it's the only place I'm really uh, comfortable with myself. So if I was going to do this, I thought I'd come out here. Um, yes, so what am I here for? I'm here, well, because it's my birthday, I wanted to do it. Uh, I was thinking about it yesterday, what did I want to do? And I'm experimenting with this Facebook Live thing. And what I want to do is I want to sh share some of my stuff with you. So, um, if anyone's, thank you, thank you, Dave. Um, that, uh, ni ni nice to meet you at uh, up at Glasgow um, last time. I don't know if you can make it this time, but um, um, yeah, it was great working with you. You're, you're a good man and uh, doing some good stuff in the world. Dave McCauley, check him out. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Oh, yes, yeah, so what I'm here to do is to share some of my yoga. So, um, yes, yeah, so if anyone out there has got any anything they want to ask, I don't, I, I've no idea how this is going to go. I've got a mat ready in case I need to practice to show you stuff. Uh, I might just be talking. I don't know. I'm only going to be here for 20 minutes or so, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, I think. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I'll, I'll enjoy. Uh, I've got this um, coffee from Claudia Grist. Hi, if she's there. Um, she uh, she makes this coffee. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the other indulgence for this morning is my baklava that I got. Hi, Julie. I got uh, from the corner shop. It's homemade back baklava. It's gorgeous. So nice to see people. So has anyone got any questions? No? Okay. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Kishori. Wonderful woman. You've got to work with um, Jeanette Kishori McKenzie, if you can. Um, she will help awaken you to possibilities, perhaps out of your, outside of your uh, experience. Uh, incredible woman. So... Um, yeah, so I'm I'm sort of um, I'm seeing if there's any questions out there. I, I I know everyone out there so far on the on this list. I think so. If any of you you have um, a particular thing you'd like to uh, me to talk about or um, get you to practice with on some level, uh, I'm I'm happy to try it out because uh, this is what I'm here for to try it out. See if it works, and then you can let me know if it's done anything useful. So any, any suggestions, any questions? Okay. So what, what should I start with? Um, okay, when, when, I, um, when I get up in the morning, I know I'm going to practice. 
I don't know what I'm going to practice. I think that's, um, I find that as a freedom um, on some level. And sometimes on, on other days when, it's, uh, when things are a little tricky for me, um, then yes, I'll, I will do something specific. But uh, the thing I will do is probably lie down and start breathing. Always legs. Oh, okay. So, sorry, I was reading. I was reading Kishori's thing. Legs. Hmm. Okay. So, if anyone wants to, um, let's see. Let's uh, let's think of something for legs, and make it easy. So we'll lie down. So if I um, low energy levels. Okay. Okay, John. Um, yeah. This will do the job, I think. I'm going to stay close to camera, and I'm going to lie down on my lovely fur thing here. And um, first things first, um, if we lie down, we take the weight off the legs, obviously. And we get a chance to perhaps reinvent um, their use. <clears throat> uh, down dog, keeping shoulders safe with hypermobility. If I get time, hip, uh, I can do hip flexors in this, Dave. Uh, if I get time, I'll have a go at dog as well. Okay. So, yes, that will probably do for content today. So we'll start um, lying on the ground. Um, and it, it's nice to make a little bit of a meal of how you arrive so that um, there's a quality, a quality of touch. I don't know how much you can see. Yes, you can. That's fine. So it, it's not just putting myself down and plonking and, you know, getting heavy and, and relaxing. There's an arrival in touch that will make a difference to my experience wherever I touch, including the base of the spine, including the head, the upper back, all of it. And if I spend a, bit, a moment or two just arriving well and get into the quality of my engagement with the earth, then we can begin. Because uh, the, one of the things that one of the things that's um, a little missing, I think, I believe, I might be wrong, um, in um, in yoga, in our understanding of yoga, is that um, we we think of groundedness and restfulness as something that happens to us. <laughs> um, it's something that we do. It's something that we engage with, and it requires it requires your engagement. So if we can be with the touch that we are making with the earth and with wherever we happen to be in space, in this case it's this knee and my hands and my elbows, if we can be with those things with some sort of realisation that it's our um, engagement with these things that gives us our experience, and it takes us out of that sort of inward um, neurotic look at ourselves and we can start to self-refer more usefully so if you um uh, i think that's probably enough chatter around that hopefully you you will have arrived on your back with your hands up in the air and i've got one leg uh, crossed over the other thigh one foot one ankle touching the other thigh uh, with uh, the other foot standing on the ground So if we can be with the, the contact of earth and space, we can also uh, derive the breathing from those points of touch. And in doing so, you, you'll find a more expansive celebratory kind of breath. And when you release the breath, instead of it being a heaviness towards the ground, again, the same contact will bring us into the sort of core of what we are doing, closer to the spine, closer to the um, central channel, urging. Um, closer to the touch from inside and uh, this is the dynamic of the of the practice it's uh, being with our touch being the space and breathing breathing and releasing into what we are doing as opposed to uh, going to sleep and waiting for something to happen and if we want to free up hip flexors for example if we want to um, reintegrate the legs for example um, the, the, by the way, John, uh, if you're out there, the, this um, thing that we're doing, the equality of, equality of engagement with touch and space will do something to the breath um, if your breathing agrees with your actions. 
that will stop you leaking energy. Yeah, that, that's a way of it, it's describing it. Um, I have no medical proof of that. I've not measured the energy leakage <laughs> when people don't do this, but I have noticed that um, when I use this with people, um, I, I've used this with people with uh, ME and uh, chronic fatigue and that sort of thing. This, this sort of equality of touch and quality of engagement with space as you breathe and release. It, it's active, it's physical, um, it can become intense, but what it doesn't do is it, it doesn't waste your energy. It seems to feed it, okay? So this should help with that, and, and, and uh, that might be as far as you want to go. If you want to investigate legs, hips, that sort of thing, then you still need to be with your touch. You need to be with the contact that the lifted ankle, well, the lifted leg ankle makes with the other thigh, and that touch becomes as important as the touch of the foot on the ground, the touch of the head on the ground, the hands in space. As you breathe and as you release. And from engaging with a, an intention to make all things equal, this touch here with the foot on, on the thigh, with the touch of the head, with the hands, everything's trying to be same-ish. Same sort of quality, the same sort of intensity as you breathe and as you release, you'll find that you change the relationships around, well, you change the spaces within and you change the relationships through your joints. And it's these relationships that, um, these changing relationships that will give you a different experience of the use of the limbs. And um, the same stuff that we're doing, the embrace of the earth through the touch and the embrace of space through whatever happens to be in space. So if you wanted to lift this leg, um, I would use the knee as if there's something to touch in space. And it's, it's, it's firm, it's active, it's, it's an expression. And you'll find your foot going into some sort of expression of what you're doing, so gathering in feeling as you meet space. So in engaging with touch and engaging with space, as you breathe and as you release, these core responses and these hand foot responses the natural in, the natural way of moving through space through fingers and toes starts to um happen naturally as a response now if that's too hard for the leg you have another point you make another point of touch you hold on to the big toe you hold on to the edge of the foot or something um, that is not necessary it's not a stretch we're not trying to do anything to ourselves it's a point of support whatever we're doing we're looking for support in what we are doing and then if you have uh, another point of touch between hand and foot, as you ground, as you breathe, and as you release tension within what you're doing, inwards, outwards, then that point of support becomes a way of finding lines of throughness in your bones, back all the way back through to the hips, all the way back into the spine, and from the spine as you release the breath and embrace into the earth as an expression of the opening behind the heart. So what, what we end up doing is supporting ourselves in two directions, outwards into space or into touch, and back from those points of touch or space through our joint, bones and joints into our spines. Um, that's the action of the limbs in relationship to the spine. And then um, the spine itself is the thing that does the expressing through the breath so it becomes a rhythmic activity <sighs> well <laughs> I enjoyed that um, so was that of any any uh, use to anyone's hips or um, legs or energy levels or whatever else was asked for feedback please people because I want to know if this stuff works. Or are you still practicing? That would be a good result. Oh, that's, that's Black Cat in the background, by the way. Um, they have imaginative names, Black Cat and Ginger. <laughs> oh, thank you, Corinna. Corinna, is that how you pronounce it? Corinna Field. Uh, nice to meet you. I don't know if I've, have I worked with you before. 
Um, it's okay. Yes, I can't. I can't really have a two-way conversation, can I? I'm, I'm trying to. Oh, good. Uh, I'm glad, Dave. I'm glad that was useful. Good. Okay. So uh, but there was something about uh, dog and shoulders uh, for hyper flexibility. Help the hips. Oh, hi, Olivia. Nice to see you. Good. Great. Thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm glad. Teaching by remote. That's very odd. Yes, uh, Corinna. Yes, uh, ev evenness of touch. Thank you, Heather. L lovely to see you. Um, yes, evenness of touch. That, that's a big clue. Um, we're so busy in our yoga trying to get it right in, in terms of structural alignment and um, other things. Uh, we're, we're missing the point. Um, the structural alignment isn't what we do to hold our structure in alignment. That's not what structural alignment is. Structural alignment occurs when we get support through our structure. If you think of a, think of a tripod, okay? It doesn't have to do anything to be structurally supported. The, the forces of support travel through the structure of a tripod. And if you were to measure the pressure at each point of touch, what would it be? It would be exactly equal. So if you're working out how to find alignment through your structure, if you're working out how to be supported through your structure, here's a really quick way of pointing yourself in that direction. You make your touch equal. Because doing so will create the conditions that will lead to structural alignment. Where you are light, if you work harder to make touch, that will make contact, will, will feed back through your joints and move you. Where you are heavy, you will be pressing, and that will send you away from that touch to elsewhere where you need to touch. Okay? And when touch is equal, you're more likely to have the condition of being supported through your structure. Then the job after that is to trust it and see if it works by letting go. Because uh, uh, in the end, we, we don't want to be doing all these things all the time. The, the whole point of the, um, the yoga is to bring us to a place where these things, the, these integrations, these relationships are received. They, they happen because we let go and breathe and let go and trust. And we end up supported where we are in space. So a good thing to pick up on, um, uh, Corinna. Evenness of touch. So yes, there was um, um, there was a question about a dog and hypermobility. Was it? Where is it now? Um, can't see it. Um, here we go. Um, down dog, keeping shoulders safe with hypermobility. Okay. Um, so. Okay, uh, well, you're, you're, you're leading the show today, Corinna. <laughs> um, I, I, I tend to do that. Uh, new people, new people that turn up. I, I like to um, uh, leap on whatever it is that they want because I, I, um, that's that's what I'm in it for. I, I want to spread this work to everyone. Um, I don't think I've worked with you before, Corinna, but I'm glad I'm resonating. So let's have a go at um, down dog with hypermobile shoulders. Um, uh, not with hypermobile shoulders. So can I do it here? Yes, I can. You can see. Okay. So hypermobility. Um, hypermobility is uh, when the generally happens when the joint spaces are um, have been compressed through effort, um, and uh, this is my assessment of it. I, I don't know if it's medically true or not. Um, um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware that I have to be careful about what I say because uh, through my experience, uh, so many things happen that are not supposed to be true. Um, they're not supposed to happen, um, but they do. 
So I, I try and uh, validate it with some kind of um, idea of um, the science of it, the, the knowledge that I have accumulated about anatomy and such things. Whether it's true or not, I have no idea. It's a, it's a model. Okay, so uh, take what I say as a way of looking at things rather than um, me being some sort of uh, scientist that knows. I don't. Um, it seems to me that that would be a... These things are a reasonable explanation if you need explaining. Okay, so back to the back to the point. Um, my picture of hypermobility is when efforts to extend the joints um, are overly muscular, overly overly superficial. Uh, when people intend to stretch, um, because doing so compresses it seems compresses the fluid spaces within the joints and when the joint is used to being um, overly compressed like that and the person is used to putting weight through um, a hyperextended joint then the whole body's um, system the way the way we move the way you move will be um, organized around this action um, and in, in normal ways of seeing things, a hypermobile joint is something you have to, uh, inverted commas, strengthen around, yeah? Which means get more tense around it to stop it from being hypermobile. Um, this is, this way of thinking is, um, makes it a very long haul process to undo the problem. There's another way of working with what you might consider to be a hypermobile joint um, that doesn't that, that can instantly change this, and it's about um, again um, the use of your touch, but with an awareness of how this comes back through you, and an, uh, some idea of uh, looking that, that what you're looking for is support through your joints. Um, you're, you're looking through for support through your bones. You're not looking to how to hold yourself with muscles, although muscles will be involved in this, of course. But what you're actually attempting to do is look for support through the axis of your bones and joints so as to not cause any strain. Um, that's the idea. So, um, uh, Corinna, is it, did you say... Um, where, where is the hypermobility? I, I'm guessing in the elbows. But are the shoulders hypermobile as well? Can you, can you let me know? Drop me a comment. Uh, what, whilst I'm waiting, uh, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll explain. So, uh, Corinna, if you, if you don't mind um, dropping me a com comment to, to say where your hypermobility is. Um, I would guess it was the elbows, because that's that would normally go with that. Elbows and shoulders. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So what I would guess, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, I would I guess is you hyperextend your elbows like that, so they hyper they, they go beyond straight, and I would also guess that you pull your shoulders down, your back, in order to feel open in the chest. Is that a, is that um. Is that at all true? So I need I just need a yes or a no, if you don't mind. <laughs> Sorry, put you on the spot like this. It's a, whether whether you do this or not. It's a common thing. People want to stretch their shoulders, and and when they stretch their shoulders, they sort of pull their arms out of their shoulder sockets. Okay, and because that makes them feel rounded. And that's a sort of stretch of the shoulders. I try not to. It's more around the shoulder girdle. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm not going to correct you, by the way. Um, uh, what, what I'm going to do is uh, give you a, another way of looking at things. So hopefully within that you can sort of uh, try something out. And that's the point. It's not, it's not that you're going to learn something different. You're going to try something different out. And then if the body likes it, then the body might want to adopt it. And then you'll have to follow suit. Okay, so if the uh, elbows are hyperextended, um, what does that do? 
it sort of feels strong, but it's um, it leads to a ten to tension around the shoulders because the the wrists are uh, hyper flexed as well, and the shoulders are hyper pushed. So, uh, and what most people do with their shoulders is they try and stretch them. They try and pull them out of the socket and at the same time because that feels compressive in the chest and try and pull the shoulder blades down at the same time so they end up with the arm and shoulder blade pulling away from each other which is exactly what you don't want in that joint it's, a, it's quite a vulnerable joint what you do want is exactly the opposite of that if you want to be supported by your hands what you need is not to push against your elbow like that but to be supported through it so the the action of opening an elbow um, moves in two directions so it's not a straightening the arm against which you put your weight it's an opening and everyone try this it's an opening in two directions imagine there's a surface for the hand to touch and there's a little bit of resistance and uh, <clears throat> imagine breathing from the back of the head or the back of the neck into the elbow that will set you up in relationship and then when you release the breath, imagine there's a surface to touch. You can put something there if you like and use it to find support back through to the shoulder joint. And it's right on the corner here. It's right on the corner here. Okay. Now where the rest of the shoulder girdle goes is so much up to you. Um, what, where you need it to go, where you need the forces to travel from there, is back through the bones. And the bones, um, the bones of support, the joints that you make through the bones, are nothing to do with the shoulder blade, really. It's uh, that the shoulder blade positions it, but the shoulder blade is sort of free of the body in terms of joints. It's the collarbone through to the top of the chest. That's where the support happens. And the access to those um, lines of support is from the touch of the hand, and that brings the whole of the wing forwards, including the shoulder blade. Yeah? Not forwards like that, but forwards from the tip of the wing here, forwards. And that brings the collarbone, collar, uh, collarbone forwards with it. And when the hand is there, when you have support, when you have something to use, then what you get support through from that outward touch is to the chest. If that's true at all, then the opening of the hands will then um, move your wings around in space so that you get a feeling of being supported through the ribs, through the sides. Okay, so it'd be in the end, it will be nothing much to do with the shoulders. There'll be a feeling of being supported inwards through the corners, inwards through the corners, as you put your hands out. I hope you were practicing with me just then, um, because if, if you practice this in space, this feeling of opening both arms, as if there's a surface to touch, and as if that touching comes back through you to give you a hug through the corners and through the breathing in here, you'll feel a core response as you release the breath. And then what is happening is a relationship between the hands moving away and the ribs coming together. Okay. If that's, if that has uh, landed with you on any level, try it with your hands on the ground. A, don't, don't uh, you might, one thing you mustn't do, one thing you mustn't do is go into what you do for dog pose. Because instantly, everything you always do is there, okay? And, and one of the things that's important about yoga is, is that it is practiced in this moment. It's not a, you don't, you're not learning to do something automatically. You're, uh, the, the yoga occurs when you're present to what you're doing. So if you can be with that sense, if you can be with that sense that the opening of the elbows is the movement in two directions, out through your hands, but also back into these corners here, and then from the use of the hands, the widening feeling, the radiating feeling, you get a hug through the ribs. So the hands go down. Let's angle it so you can see the hands going down. The hands go down, and that's an act of touch. Okay? And the ha hands going down should 
give you support in the top of the chest if you found the bones of the thing and then your job is to relax into that support and then the radiating out of the hands should feed back through your corners to give you a hug not only at the corners but in the release of the breath underneath your wings through the sides of the ribs as you release the breath and so the hands go down and then there's a radiating out that comes back through your ribs hands go down breathe and then there's a radiating out that comes back through your ribs release the breath and then use that lean into that don't push it away don't push it away lean into it and let the weight travel over your feet so use your use your feet to to straighten the legs okay so you create the condition of support the hands go down and you should feel supported in your chest and that makes a that will make a rounded action you don't have to do that it just happens and then from that support you radiate out through the hands and remember it's an opening in the elbows in two directions if you can get into that feeling you won't hurt your elbows and you'll probably feel supported back through your shoulders through your ribs so that when the hands go down it's your ribs that feel supported and the feet um, can just feed out through the toes to let the legs on unfold away from you with the release of the breath So let me know if you if that was of any use to you. Practicing this is great, wonderful. Yes, yes, yes. From John, thank you. Now, thank you for all these little words of encouragement. Excellent. It's a feeling of really gathering in. Yes, you got it. And that's that's what happens. Ha! <laughs> this is this is amazing. Um, the way the thing that I work with is that um, this idea that a yoga isn't something that you do you don't do yoga what you do is you create the right conditions for the nature for the nature that is the yoga to arise naturally that's my that's my baseline principle the thing that we need to do is create the right conditions and then the the natural body's intelligence will arise from that and it's our job to learn to interpret that the messages that we get well okay the thing that we can do is get good at recognizing what the conditions are and um, what, what excites me so much about what uh, Corinna, Corinna has just said, um, a feeling of gathering in, was um, that that is my third condition. The first condition that I look for is, is simple. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, how does my touch support me? How, do, how can I be with the earth? How can I let go? How can I be relaxed and supported? That sort of thing I need to create the conditions for that to happen it should that not be forthcoming the second condition I look for is um, and I should be feeling space uh, the thing of looking for support should be giving me a spaciousness and usually that's um, a relationship to space so that that would be my second condition how, how do we how are we relating to space how we're engaging with our space as much as how are we engaging with our earth should those two things not lead to the outcome we're looking for the third condition is the answer to how to integrate those two directions of inquiry and that the answer is you gather in the space that you're looking for is it is, is not outside of yourself it's from the support you get from being with space, but the space you're looking for is that which comes inwards. And there is a gathering in quality to what you're doing that will give you the space and the support that you need. And it's, so this is the third condition that I look for. Um, should the other two not lead to the yoga? The yoga is something you recognize. 
you recognize it because it feels right okay you recognize it because you feel supported you recognize it because you let go and you're there um, present to what is and there's a it's so it's a i think it's universally recognizable so this this yoga belongs to absolutely everyone um, the thing that I'm trying to do is just bring awareness to the fact that what we need to do is not do the postures, although the postures are useful for um, playing with what the body is capable of doing, but just as a frame of reference for how can I find these relationships that allow me to be entirely myself, but entirely free and supported within what I'm doing. So, um, yes, that feels like a nice um, roundup point. Um, thank you very much. I, that, I really enjoyed doing that. Um, it, yes, it was a lovely birthday treat for me. So, um, yes, thank you. I, yes, I'll, I'll be doing this again. Um, and maybe half past ten on a Tuesday is a good time for this. Uh, let me know if, that, if that's uh, suitable for those of you that were here, generally. And uh, feel free to leave any other comments. And please, when, it, when, it, when this is finished, do share it around. Because um, I would like to build up, um, I would like to get this stuff across to as many people as I can. It's free, it doesn't cost them anything. <laughs> um, I, I, and I'm putting, I'm in the, in the space of, um, oh, thank you, Julie. Yeah. Thank you, Heather. Happy birthday uh, uh, to me. <laughs> thank you, Heather. Um, yes. Uh, was it? Yes, I'm in the process of putting together a little um, guided seven-day pranayama course for those that want um, a bit more support in their yoga practice. Um, I'll, 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 when I put that together, I'll, I'll give people links to that. But in the meantime, if you found this useful and you can think of anyone that might benefit from it, please do share it. Um, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aqua Viva School of Yoga. We run workshops, retreats, courses, uh, one to, a lot of private sessions. Um, uh, we use, I use this stuff, we all use the stuff actually, to help people um, with physical issues. Um, it can be used directly for that, um, as well as the mind-body stuff, which is about you know, developing as a human being. Um, and the next opportunity to work with me and do uh, please pass this on will be um, in Glasgow this Friday um, I'm doing something I call the joint clinic it's just a way of uh, inviting people that feel like they're, they're too broken to do yoga or they've got a problem that they they dare not speak of in, in a yoga class bring it and I use it to show you how the yoga works so if you're interested, uh, sign, uh, come, come and join me in, in Glasgow. It's in, in the Moment Centre. Friday, it's an it's a easy start. It's 11 a.m. till 4 with a lunch break. And um, it goes very deep. It's a smallish group. Um, yes, yes, John, the Pranayama course will be online. And um, yes, you'll have free access to that at some point when I've done it. Um, yes, yeah, so pass this on. And um, yes. Great. I'll see you. I'll see you the next time. Um, in principle, let, let's say it'll be t ten thirty next Tuesday as well. Um, I might have to move around a Skype or two, but um, yeah, let's let's say that because I, I really enjoyed that. Namaste. Thank you. <laughs>